Can y'all hear that guitar? I want to let you know that you are amazing. I'm talking about you. No superhero, just a superstar. You are. You know that first step where you gotta look at yourself? That one we often walk right over? It's a step that many don't want to take because they're afraid of what they might see. There are an extraordinary number of things that you can do to be an ally. Right. We have been waiting for this moment to be heard for so long. This is not something that's gonna change overnight. We have to get uncomfortable and we have to understand that for everyone to be better, some of us will have to make some sacrifices. Really, all of us will have to make some sacrifices, and it starts with you. When you understand Black Lives Matter, then all lives matter. Now, a huge first step to truly becoming an ally is acknowledging that our skin gives us different privileges. Well, acknowledging that in no way means you are creating a divide. It means we are starting to build a bridge, a bridge that people of all different colors can come together and say, hey, we are different. But when we combine our powers, we can make the world a more just, safe, and equal place. I am a privileged white male, but I am stained by society's systemic racism. Racism is my problem. Racism is white people's problems. Being anti-black is a white person's problem. I don't need you to feel sorry for me. I need you to feel sorry too. Because if black people in America are hurting, our community is hurting. If Latino people in our community is hurting, our community is hurting. If LGBTQ people in our community are hurting, our community is hurting. Think about what you can do to amplify and elevate persons of color right now. And that's the difference between being an ally and a savior. I don't need you to speak for me. I need you to stand by me while I speak for myself. Part of white fragility is that I am constantly careful about what I say. I'm constantly careful about how I say it. I am constantly careful about how I carry myself in a space because I can't make you uncomfortable. My white friends insist they are not racist, but they participate in and benefit from racist systems, racist laws, and racist institutions. And when I try to talk about this with my white friends, it escalates their attempt to change the narrative. Calm down, Heather. Wait for all the facts. What about black on black crime, Heather? Police shoot white people more than black people, Heather. It's hard to be a cop, Heather. When you're having these conversations, if something catches you in the chest and you're like, ooh, yeah, lean in. That's the time. Lean into that and, and, and ask yourself, why am I so bothered? It's important that you align yourself with black and brown voices and ask the question. I'd rather have you ask than be ignorant. Respect one another as persons and as individuals. I am not a monolith, black people are not a monolith. If you reach out to somebody and they say, oh no, honey, I ain't talking to you. That does not cut off your effort. You do not get a pass to say, this is too much. It is not a person's of color duty to educate you. And, and I know that sounds unfair, right? We gotta talk to every color person and see which, it's messy, again, it's messy, right? But we do that for you guys. And we've been doing that for you guys for a long, long time. It is not lost to me that I stand on the steps of a capital in a state that has done its absolute best to whitewash and divide history and to put blinders on when faced with the reality of race. Oregon, it's time to confront the reality that historical and legacy systems were created in this state that they continue to have the effect of keeping black and brown people from feeling welcome here. 
Ending white supremacy is not a political position. It is a position of advanced human decency. You cannot protect or serve while that hate is in your ranks. To empower the police to protect and serve, they must not be responsible for mental health checks, drug aversion, social work, or mentoring. I want us to be comfortable with the police again. So I'm trying to create a dialogue between the citizens and the police department so we can build that trust. Now, do I trust the police all the way? No, but I would like to. I don't want to make my barber mad because he's the one that's cutting my hair. I don't want to make the cook mad because she might spit my food. So the people that, that are here to do something for us, let's hold them accountable and let's make sure that they're doing that. Let's take our power back. They work for us. Everybody that pays taxes, y'all. And if we don't step up and take control of our own power, they'll just run along and do it with it as they please. This is us stepping up right here. This is us holding them responsible for their actions. And when they're willing to correct it, we will accept it because that's the only way we can move forward. The goal is not just to defund the police. That's not enough. We need to defund the police and we need to invest in our communities. We need reform and we are slowly getting it step by step. Just a few days ago on June 8th, as a direct result of the actions of the people, the Justice of Policing Act of 2020 was passed, which is a civil rights and police reform bill with a huge focus on police accountability. So cops like the ones that killed George Floyd cannot repetitively abuse their power. Dismantling racism is messy at its best. You're gonna mess up, especially when you're learning and unlearning. You will do harm, you will learn and do better. Please, please stand with us, please, please. Don't give up, don't give in. When you get pushed back, you push back. Please. Shoot up.